I have the agreement to get started. So thank you for coming, even though it's quite early. Uh, I'm gonna talk about Drupal 8 theming, why it's cool and what is the problems in the Drupal 7 theming, and why it's better to theme Drupal 8 than Drupal 7. My clicker is working. So, uh, I'm Laurie Escola. I, uh, I'm here building my first website in the picture. Uh, I live in Finland. Uh, it's a little bit colder than in here, so I'm having a hard time because it's quite hot. I'm a front-end and a back-end developer, so I'm doing everything. Uh, I'm working for a company called Druid. It's a fin fin Finnish-based Drupal company. It's pretty awesome because they pay me to come here. They pay me to fix Drupal 8 issues. So they are quite cool. Uh, thank you. And I do actually like cold. So when I say I hate hot, it's true. But it's not absolutely true because I like hot, like sauna. So when it's like plus 30, it's not OK. But it's when it's plus 100, yeah, that's cool. So we are weird people. You can find me from uh, different places with the username Lauri with the three eyes. From Twitter, almost the same, but, but the last I is number one. So if you have any questions you want to blame on me, you are offended or something, just tweet me and we can talk. But yeah, let's start. So the problem is Drupal 7 front end sucks. And did you see this person? Yeah, that's what he thinks. He says, Drupal 7 has made me fat with all the divs inside it. But I'm gonna explain why. So, you can see a hamburger here. But in a hamburger, there is a wrapper and a content. It's similar to what we have in uh, Drupal. So we have wrapper and we have content. But we have a lot of stuff. So, so the hamburger is like that. It's a quite big. And we have also the, the side order, the fries. We have them in Drupal. We have a lot of stuff. So this is the result. And the front end developer it has to eat all that stuff. What happens is a heart attack. And no one likes heart attacks because that, that means that people are leaving because they don't like it, because they get too fat. So things has to be changed for uh, Drupal 8 to make it a little bit better. So what we do is we modernize the technologies with the new stuff in the Drupal 7 post 960 grid system. I hope no one is using it still. Now we have HTML5 and responsive design there, which is a little bit modernized. Uh, the HTML5 markup is a lot better semantically than the one we have in Drupal 7, it's cool. Uh, but because of that, Drupal 8 won't support the IE6, IE7, or IE8, which is cool. Woo. Uh, the CSS has been made a little bit better. The experience to write CSS is way better because we have removed a lot of classes from core. There is like one of the good examples is the body class HTML. I don't know why it's there because no one is ever using it. If you are putting CSS, it's probably HTML. It can be XML too, but. I don't see the reason for the HTML class. So we have removed a lot of unnecessary stuff from there because it doesn't make any sense to have them. Uh, also, the CSS has been rebuilt on Smax and BEM, which is cool. So um, we have actually like architecture on the front end. It's not like different everywhere. And uh, it's, it's modern because people are using it in other communities. So when they come to Drupal, they, they, they can see that we, are, we have a clear structure, clear, clear architecture, uh, how we are building stuff. Uh, and here, just a nice example of what we have in Drupal core. Uh, so we have in the field, we have the field class and we have the modifier of the field. Uh, so this is for the field name which is this dash dash name, which means it's a modifier. And we actually use them everywhere in Drupal core because we have cleaned up the CSS. Uh, there is issue where you can find more inf information about the decision and stuff. And because of this new architecture, we have uh, put it all the CSS files in the different CSS, uh, all the CSS in the different CSS files, uh, which is cool. But 
The reason why this is cool is that we have libraries in Drupal 8, uh, and we actually have kind of front-end dependencies for the assets, so we define which CSS files, which rows of CSS we need on each page, so we don't load any unnecessary CSS files, which makes the browser rendering the page faster. And as an example, on the, on the anonymous front page in Drupal 8, we don't load jQuery at all, because there is nothing that needs jQuery, so we don't load it. The same happens on CSS. Let's say if there is a comments CSS file on the front page, there is no comments printed at all, the comments CSS won't be loaded on the front page because it's not needed there. So it makes the page render faster. Uh, also in Drupal 8, we have added nice little functionalities to remove the CSS files. So when you have these CSS files you think you don't need, you can just do in your uh, in your info.jaml file, uh, style sheets that's remove, and then you define which CSS files you want to nuke away. Uh, you save the file, clear the cache, and they are gone, which is cool. So now when we refresh the page, we are gonna lose uh, some good uh, CSS files we don't need. So you can actually have only the CSS files you want to have which makes things quite cool. So, as you can see, we are missing the CSS files now that I defined to be removed. It's cool. Uh, not only the CSS file structure has changed, but the whole Drupal 8 uh, st file structure, so you don't have to put your themes anymore under the sites. Where is all my themes folder? You can put them under the themes folder in the Drupal, Drupal root, which is cool because now we have the core folder for the core stuff. So it's actually a lot easier to find the theme. The templates are now in the templates folder. They are not everywhere, because in Drupal 7, the templates are all around the place, uh, especially in the contrips. There is templates in the, uh, in the module root. There is templates in the themes, themes folder. There is uh, templates in the templates folder. So it, does, it didn't make any sense. So now we have the, the templates folder as a standard for the core and all the contrib should be using the templates folder now. And actually the templates are being used now in Drupal core instead of theme functions because Drupal 7 was uh, almost almost all the markup was coming from the theme functions. So in the Drupal 7 we have 55 templates only and 154 functions, theme functions. And in Drupal 8 we have 12 theme functions left. They are all gonna be removed before Drupal 8 release, at least I hope so and we have 190 templates. It's a lot of templates, but templates is a good way to store markup because front-end developers like them, more than writing uh, some team functions that are mayhem. How many of you like uh, teaming, let's say, team item list? That, that is a good example. It's a really bad uh, team function. It's a lot of code which contains logic. If you want to change the markup, you have to copy all the logic into your template file, and it's a mayhem. So it's not very nice. But uh, why this was done was uh, because we kind of tried to renew the whole team layer to make it simplified. So John Albin make, made this picture of uh, Drupal 7 team layer, and it's kind of like, yeah, what the fuck is happening here? It's crazy. Like, it's a triangle of, uh, of Drupal 8, Drupal 7, uh, team stuff, there's a lot of stuff. So we removed uh, the th team functions out of this, we removed a few other parts that were unnecessary from there and from, from there and from there and this. So what we have in Drupal 8 is a little bit more straightforward, no, no more triangles, because we want to have a, a pipe where things are going into. So let's say if you, if you are looking for a, a specific thing that would be done, you, there is a single place where, where it is. Actually, there is now two places because we have the like initial settings and then we have the alter level. So there is uh, two levels on everything. So the hook theme suggestions should be defined in the, uh, in, the, in the module that is defining the hook theme. Then we have the hook theme suggestions alter which should be defined in other modules or, or themes. Then the same is also on the pre-process level. So we have the template pre-process which is in the initial module defining the uh, hook theme implementation, and then we have the hook theme preprocess, which is for the other, other places. 
is cool. How many of you have heard of Twig? How many of you haven't heard of Twig? Okay, so the 20% who didn't answer are sleeping, that's good. But yeah, so what we try to tackle by having Twig is uh, these problems. So in Drupal 7, we had a lot of problems with uh, people writing code in the PHP files, uh, a lot of crazy stuff, like this. So yeah, I don't even know what that does. I guess it doesn't done anything because I don't run the query, but still, if, if it would be run, it would done that's really weird stuff. It would drop the database, but it would roll back. Yeah, so um, this is almost impossible in Drupal 8. Of course, if there is some crazy backend developers who are, uh, because adding a function in the tweak means that you, you just kind of map a PHP function to be a, uh, available in the, in the tweak. So you just tell, okay, in the tweak, if you call this tweak function, it should call this PHP function. So if someone does this for the DB uh, query, uh, the front-end developers can still do this. So it is possible, but it, it requires that someone expli explicitly uh, wants to make the DB query available in the tweak template. So it's just automatically available there, and if you are adding a DB query to, uh, to be avala available in the tweak template, it, you know you are doing something wrong now because that is not the way we should do stuff. Yo, so there is probably people who has been using Twig, because Twig is a general templating engine. It can be used in Symfony projects, it can be used in other projects too. Even WordPress can use Twig. Uh, so you might have used Twig before, but I'm gonna give a very short introduction what Twig is about. So in the PHP, when you print variables, you say uh, print and the variable name. So in the tweak, it's a little bit different. You just use the curly brackets and define the variable name. There is a lot of interesting stuff regarding accessing the data inside the variable. So if it's an array or object or whatever, you just say dot and then you define the uh, array key or objects uh, the uh, property name, uh, which is quite cool because uh, in, in the PHP, you have to know what type the uh, variable is and then you would have to know how to access that type of variable. So in the, in the tweak, there is only a single way to access the data inside uh, the variables. So it's, it's way much more user-friendly for the front-end developers. They don't have to understand how PHP works. They just run their magic. There is also variables inside the tweak. You can set your own variables inside tweak if you want. So uh, let's say if you want to define just a string type of variable, you say set variable equals whatever. You can also uh, set array type of uh, variables there. It's easy. So here's what I was talking about. So in the PHP, hamburger is an array which contains the language thing for some reason. And then, but th that, that is the object. You should know what is the object. It's how a front-end developer should know that. And then there is some arrays and then there is a method, but in the tweak, what that would be is a hamburger sandwich content. But look, there is no language thing anymore because we don't want to access different languages in the template. It should be done somewhere else. Then also, as you can see here, I'm doing some stuff for the, so the content is a property of an object. I just say dot content. That's pretty simple only single way of accessing data. So whatever it is, even the method is being called the same way. So you don't have to know that it's a method, you just say dot eat and it will call it. That's awesome. Okay, so uh, in, the, in the tweak file, because you cannot run any PHP functions by default, it has its own, own functions. So this is one of the example of tweak functions, it's a dump. It's like var dump in a, in a PHP. You can also download a Gint module, Gint. It's built inside the devil. So then you can run Gint and it will use like the Chromo kind of interface like in Drupal 7. 
But if you want to see all the variables that you have in your, inside your quick template, you can just say dump without giving any par parameters for the function. It will show everything that you have inside the quick template. It's quite cool because you can see everything that you have there. Um, if you want to print a content of a specific variable, you, get, you, get, you just define the uh, variables that you want to see as a parameter for the function. Uh, one very common thing people are doing in the Twig file is a loops. Um, so the loops, they are designed for front-end developers. So they have the stuff front-end developers need. So this is just a very simple example of a loop. It's kind of a for each, what we have in PHP. So uh, you just say for user in users, which means that we, the, the single item in the users array is user inside there. And then you can do whatever you want inside there. But the coolest thing I found using for is that um, it provides you the, uh, the, this kind of magic stuff inside the loop without doing any math. So you don't have to do count or access the uh, item key or something to get this stuff. So uh, there is a loop length, which gives you the length of the loop. Then there is the loop first, which uh, returns Boolean depending on whether you are on the first item of the loop or not. Then the last is the same thing, obviously, uh, but it returns true when you are on the last item of the array. Then there is loop index, which returns the current item you are accessing. And then you can build the logic depending on that. So let's say there is the loop first. You can do whatever you want. Uh, if you are instead on the second item of the loop, we can do something else. And if you are on the last item, we can do something else. It's quite cool. But this is not everything. We have some other stuff also on the for loops. So very common thing you have to do on the front end, you have to write dif different logic, depending on whether there is content or not. So if there is no content, you can just say for uh, like this, like a normal for it. And Instead of closing the for, you can just say else, and you can put whatever no result stuff you want there. And then you just end the for. It's part of the for loop. Because usually you have to manage to somehow, somehow, somehow handle the empty results. It's cool. Then I already showed you the tweak functions, but because front-end developers sometimes need to uh, modify the uh, the, the content of some string or array, we have uh, filters for that. So we have two different syntaxes for filters. We have the, uh, this kind of uh, block type of filters, and we have the other like shorten for the filters. But I'm gonna first explain what this does. So this is a upper filter, which takes the, uh, everything that is inside this filter into, the, into that function and returns it back uh, everything uppercase. So it kind of returns the same value, but in different format. The other way of uh, running the filters is just using the, the bar and then say uh, the filter name. So this is another filter called length, which just simply takes the name from here as the first parameter for the function and returns it uh, in a different format. And this, in this case, it's the length of the, of the variable. It's, it's quite cool because you can do all different sorts of filters and there is a lot of built-in filters already in the tweak, but if you, if you need your own, the backend developers are able to add their own, own ones. So these are the all the big filters that are currently in the tweak, tweak core. These are not Drupal specific stuff. Okay, more stuff, what is cool about tweak? Tweak blocks. Tweak blocks are different than Drupal blocks. Don't mess them up. They are very different things. Uh, so why tweak blo blocks are cool? Tweak blocks are cool because you can create very easily some kind of uh, logic inside your template. Because the problem in the Drupal 7, if you uh, override a template, you have to write everything again. And if you want to do a change, you have to do it for both of the files. But with the blocks, you can just extend the, the other, other template and then you can do the changes for the specific blocks you want to want to change. So I'm gonna give you a nice little example that you can do with this. So over here, I'm gonna edit the page HTML. 
oh, it's so small. Okay, so I'm gonna add a new block, which is a header block. And we obviously need more kittens, so we want to add some kittens for this block. So, we need more kittens, it's over there, you can see it. It's uh, just simply printing everything that is inside the block, it doesn't print any diffs or anything uh, on it. But now I'm gonna check a uh, template override for this. So I'm gonna take the uh, front page template, but now you can see some weird stuff because I'm not copying the page template anymore because I don't want to have the, all the markup inside this extending template. So I'm only saying that in this empty template that I'm extending the page template, and now I'm saying, okay, I'm go I want to override the header block. So first I print the parent, which means that we want to print everything that is in the parent block, and then we add one kitten into this block. So let's see, I'm gonna clear the cache so my uh, template will be found. And uh, now on the front page, I should have a kitten. But uh, on the on the sub page, there should be no no kitten anymore. Okay, let's see if it's yeah, it's not there. Okay, but now comes the cool stuff. So the the client wants to have more stuff, of course. So we need to change the page template. So what are we gonna do? We are gonna edit the page template. We don't have to change the overriding template at all. So we are gonna add some text there because some text is very important today. Let's see. The sum text is on the front page where we have the template override and it's also on the sub page, I guess. Yeah, it's there. We only edited a one template. That's very nice when you have complex templates where there is multiple things happening because uh, normally you would have to edit both of the both of the templates, which is not very nice. So this is all built-in uh, Twig. So if you're using Twig in some other project, uh, you can find all this stuff from twig.sentialabs.org. This is uh, general Twig stuff. Uh, you don't like Twig? Yeah, some people say it's too hard, but it's not hard. It's easier than PHP. But we have still a solution for those people. No problem. You can enable the PHP template in your teams and you can write your PHP and uh, database queries in the templates without any problems. We, we support that because we are, we are nice. So it's cool. Then let's move forward for the Drupal specific Twig functionalities. So if you are using Twig in some other projects, you don't have this. This is Drupal because we want to be gentle. We want to make things hard. Actually, when we have integrated Twig, in the Drupal core, we've been very gentle for Twig. We haven't removed any functionality from Twig, just to not mess around with people's experience of, experience of Twig. So it's, the experience should be very similar than with other projects using Twig. So it, it should lower the barrier of moving to different projects in using different CMSs, at least if they are all using Twig. But yeah, so we have some Drupal specific filters. So we have the clean class filter, which is used for which is used for cleaning classes, which is which is cool. Uh, so if you need to add some classes over there, and you want to do it out of like let's say your node title as a class, this will generate whatever you put inside it to be a class. So if you have white spaces, it will replace them with hyphens, or if you have a, uh, a slash or whatever, it will replace it with hyphen. So it looks like a class. Then we have the without, uh, without uh, filter, which is used uh, mostly on the render arrays. Render arrays are arrays, and obviously if you have in render arrays a child, uh, let's say uh, comments, you can say without comments, and it won't print comments. It replaces the hide function from uh, Drupal 7. But yeah, here I have just a simple array. I want to print all the contributors for the Drupal 8 uh, team system and then uh, I don't want to print myself because I don't want to do it. Then it will print all the people but not not me. It's a, it works the same way on the render arrays. Uh, 
Then we have a placeholder, which is quite cool too, because if the, if the string that is over there is empty, it will be replaced with this value. So when we print this, as you can see, the stuff is not defined. It will print kitten instead. Uh, one of the uh, things we do a lot in uh, Drupal, this is a very Drupal specific stuff. I, I guess we have been ha uh, having some conversations of putting this upstream to tweak core, but I guess it's not there. So it's attributes objects, which is cool because uh, it's kind of a storage for all the HTML attributes you have in one element. So uh, you can do in the preprocess add class, and then you can run the same thing in your template. So you can say set attribute ID to be kitten. It will set the attribute to be ID, I, uh, ID to be kitten. You can set other attributes like I love trees, yeah? Or you can remove attributes, it's cool. But there is also same for the classes. It's not only like attributes because classes are, because usually the HTML attributes are strings. They are just a single value string. But classes are array because there is multiple of them. So we have to have a separated functionality for classes. So you can say add class uh, whatever you want. There is also issue if you are looking for more information about our class. There is all the different methods and everything uh, explained. Uh, we, you can also run remove class. So let's say in this example, the backend developer uh, puts in some ve uh, vegan stuff that frontend developers don't usually like. So we remove carrots and potatoes uh, with uh, bacon and beef, which is cool. Uh, so let's say if there is some problems with the backend developers, they are adding some nasty classes you don't want to have, you can replace them in the front end very easily. Then we have the translate, translate stuff in the tweak. That, that's obviously not part of the tweak core because uh, it doesn't support translations that way. So in the Drupal core, we have added uh, t, t filters and uh, kind, of, kind of a trans block where you can just print everything and it will uh, convert these this pieces of code into a key function. So uh, these two things are doing the same thing. So uh, actually this uh, last example, it, it converts this username to be a username uh, kind of placeholder and then it replaces it with the username variable. So that's quite simple too. So you can translate your strings that are th that you are putting into your template, which is cool. Um, then one of the problems we had in Drupal 7 was that uh, finding stuff was hard. There is the devil teamer, which is horrible. Uh, if, I, if I run it, it, it will crash my browser 10 times and I cannot restart it because it will just crash my browser completely but we have a tweak debug, which is cool. So it will add this kind of blocks into the, into the markup. I have a nice video of, of this too. So this is uh, plain markup we have without the tweak debug on it. Uh, I have no idea where the stuff is coming from. So what we are gonna do, we are gonna go to the services.jml file, which is in under site's default folder. I'm gonna turn on the debug but this is some unnecessary stuff that is not needed for that, but it's important because I want to have to auto reload and cache files so that I don't have to uh, uh, rebuild the cache every time I change a tweak file. So now I'm gonna clear the cache and I'm gonna have some cool stuff on my browser. Okay. Yeah, we have some cool stuff there. We have a block telling that this markup is coming from this template, and it also tells all the overrides for that template. It's cool, because now you have a good idea where the stuff is coming from. It's easy. But yeah, isn't that awesome? You want to have this in Drupal 7? Yeah, what happens? Drupal fellows ask for a new feature, then the Drupal folks take codes like a boat, and they add it to Drupal 7. So you have this in Drupal 7 too. We added it to Drupal 7.34, I guess, or 33, 34. Uh, so if you are running the newest version of Drupal 7, you have it. So it's just a tweak debug, uh, it's template debug, I guess. Uh, you can find the issue over here, how to use it. 
uh, and you can, you can use it on Drupal 7 too. It's cool. Uh, what else we've done? Uh, not only just making the, the tools better for the people, we've also done some cleanup for the, for the way markup is being created. Uh, and we have had one very well-known person, Morten DK, working on this. So Morten DK said that he eats divs for a breakfast, so there is no more divs in the Drupal 8 core because he has ate all of them. So I'm going to show you some cool stuff we've done. How many of you like theming pagers in Drupal 7? Anyone enjoys theming pagers? No one enjoys theming pagers. OK, let's see how many of you enjoy theming, theming them in Drupal 8, because this stuff is quite cool. So we have a pager with the default markup from Drupal core. I'm going to use the, uh, the uh, template override to override this markup to be something completely different, because I don't want to have LIs and all that stuff, because I don't need them. So, OK, here, using the tweak debug, I'm going to check out where my theme is. It's under the system module. So I'm going to copy the uh, template from uh, there. OK, now we can see where the stuff is coming from. OK, so we have a one template where all this stuff is compared to what we have had in Drupal 7, was multiple team functions and, uh, yeah. So they were team functions and they, there was multiple of them. So I'm gonna remove the allies because I don't need them. And yeah, I have to also rebuild the class functionality a little, little bit because of uh, it used to work differently. So let's add a new uh, variable cor called item class and then I'm gonna add it on the uh, link. Let's remove more allies. Yeah. So now I should have a little bit cleaner template, a cleaner, little bit cleaner markup for my for my uh, stuff. Okay. So we lost some default styling, obviously because the markup was changed. But now I've created my dream markup for the stuff. Oops, I have is active for multiple of uh, links. Okay, something is wrong on my on my stuff, so I I I have to fix this. Okay, what did I do wrong? Oh, I don't set uh, empty variable for item class, so it's set in the for loop all the time. After that, which is not cool. Okay, so now we have the is active class for a single single uh, link which is cool, and I've built my dream markup for, uh, for pager in uh, two minutes. In Drupal 7, uh, it would have taken me uh, maybe two days. So we saved a lot of good time doing this stuff. So we can do something, something else. Isn't this cool? Yeah, now you can enjoy theming pagers in uh, Drupal 8. Uh, other really bad thing in Drupal 7 was theming menus. I think menus were even worse than pagers. So we had to fix this stuff because, yeah, no one wants to team Drupal 7 menus. So I'm going to start again. I'm going to uh, uh, create my dream markup for the mine menu. So I'm going to copy the uh, menu template for my mine, uh, mine menu. OK, so I want to make this uh, a C menu because it's a component for me. So I prefix it with the C. Uh, the UL, I want to have the uh, menu level. The menu level in Drupal 7 was garbage. No one wants to do menu level classes in Drupal 7. OK, so now I have a menu level, and I have changed the, the main class of this. Yeah, the, the style changed a little bit because I had uh, CSS already there. OK, so this looks pretty cool. I have the menu level in the 30 seconds. I have changed the main class, but oh, there is a leaf class. Duh. Why, why we, what does the leaf mean? I don't know. It's, 
I don't want to have leaves in my uh, menu. So, okay, let's just uh, let's just kill it because we don't want to have that. Yeah. So, let's see how it's like now. No leaf class anymore. So, theming a menu took me maybe uh, one and a half minutes. Isn't that cool? Is there improvement from Drupal 7? How many of you think this is better than Drupal 7? Not everyone, but most of the people thinks. So it's cool. I guess someone has done something right if this, better, if, if this is better than Drupal 7. Okay, this is the, the last thing I'm gonna cover in my uh, presentation. It's a consensus banana, which is, which is made actually, actually one year ago in DrupalCon Austin. Uh, it was kind of an agreement of what we want to do for the Drupal 8 front end. And yeah, I'm gonna show you what we decided there. So the phase one of uh, consensus banana was to move all the classes from the pre-process functions to templates. So the classes are easy to be mod mo uh, modified in the template. So we used the add class that I showed, you, so showed to you in the template. Uh, then the phase two is a new base team in Drupal core called Classy. So we have now uh, one extra team compared to uh, Drupal 7. The Garland got removed and we added Classy. Uh, Classy is obviously a base team as I said. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna explain uh, a little bit later what you can do with Classy. Uh, also we have moved the CSS from core to Classy team. So there is no CSS in the core anymore. And the phase one is done, which is cool. So all the, all the classes are now coming from the, uh, from the template. Uh, phase two, the classy team has been created and the templates are in, uh, in a classy. And now we are working on the phase three, moving CSS from core to classy. So in the phase one, we moved all the classes from pre-process to templates. So we have now a lot of these kind of blocks. So when a front-end developer want to, wants to create the three markup wants to have whatever classes. I'm gonna now show you. Okay, so I want to have, instead of node, I want to call it a content because it's content. It's content type for me. We don't promote content or we don't have sticky, so I'm gonna remove those classes. I don't use view, view mode because I don't like them. I don't want to have a clear flick fix class. This, this could be just is publi unpublished or something. So. This is how you change your classes in Drupal 7. Instead of writing a pre-process, you just edit them inside your template, which makes things a lot easier. You don't have to spend time on some unnecessary stuff. Then in the page two, we created the new team classy. So in the, uh, in the Drupal 8, we have uh, the classy as the base team. So if you want to have uh, the core uh, markup, I mean like, sensible defaults when you are building your own team, you, you extend classy. It will create the good markup that we use to in 2015 for you, but maybe in 2000, uh, let's say 2020, if you are still using Drupal 8, it might not be the best markup anymore. So then you don't just extend classy and you can build your own markup. Also, the base teams, they can define whatever they want for the markup. They don't have to uh, uh, manage all the core markup. They don't have to override everything, they can just create their own markup in the, in the, in the team. So the kitten uh, team I have here is, doesn't have any markup from the core, it can define its own markup. Uh, and how this works in the Drupal, Drupal core, we have the seven and the Bartik, as uh, team seven is the admin team and Bartik is the uh, default uh, team for the landing, uh, the like content pages or so, uh, and those. They are extending classy to get the sensible defaults for the markup because we need them to team, team stuff. And then we have the start, which doesn't extend classy. So it doesn't have almost any classes or any markup. Uh, uh, and what, what will this change? Is that all the logic of classes is now in the classy and even the automated tests that needs to, needs to have some markup are now using classy. So the classy is the team, uh, the base team in the web, web test cases. 
And the, the core markup can be simplified even more. So we are removing all the, all the markup from the core. We don't have any empty diffs or empty spans or whatever because they cannot be used for anything. So you can get very simple uh, core markups if you don't define uh, classy. And in the phase three, what we are doing is we are moving all the CSMs from the core to classy because obviously it's not, uh, it's not needed anymore there because there is no classes to target the CSS doesn't do anything, so we, uh, we are now putting them to classy. Th and what it means is that if you don't extend classy, you don't get core CSS files anymore, which is cool because you don't even have to use the style sheet remove to get rid of the stuff. Uh, and that then people are asking what about the JavaScript because there is functionality. Uh, we are uh, moving to use data attributes instead of uh, classes to make the JavaScript fer work. Uh, at the moment, how it works is that we are trying to uh, prefix all the classes which are used in the JavaScript with the JS prefix, so we know that they are being used in the JS and those won't be removed from, from the core. So you might get some JS classes, but all the other like uh, classes used for theming are removed from the from a core. So if you're creating a new theme, remember to extend classy if you want to have the sensible defaults because the core markup obviously doesn't have almost anything. If you want to help, RV1 means markup freeze, but we, we, can, sti we can still get stuff in because uh, there is some, sti some, st some time still, but yeah, hopefully we can get the RC1 released as soon as possible. Join the sprints that are happening tomorrow yeah, we are promoting the sprints a lot because we want to get everyone there. There is something to do for everyone. Thank you, and maybe we have some questions. Yeah, it's working. So now if you have a question, I, you, I can hand you a mic so it can be heard. Okay. Um, right, well, thanks very much for that. It was very interesting. Um, I've got a question about Contrib Drupal 8 themes. Is, uh, do you know of any that are being worked on yet? And if there are, would you expect all Contrib Drupal 8 themes to extend Classy? So um, there is uh, lots of uh, Contrib themes that are being worked on at the moment. Um, so I guess the, the better, uh, the, the best position, I mean, what is being worked on most is the, uh, what is it called? Not, uh, what has the uh, components? Uh, it's uh, now I have like yeah I cannot remember the name, but there is multiple themes that have been worked on. Uh, I, I we can talk later and I can tell you which themes because I don't remember the name. Um, uh, Bootstrap, no Bootstrap is is Bootstrap the team? Yes, Bootstrap is the one that I've been looking most and it's in a bit it's in a pre pretty good. Uh, position already. And the other question that I know more is the whether they are extending classy or not, is that I guess they are not extending classy because that is the whole idea to create uh, more possibilities for the contrib teams. So that they can, instead of overriding all the core markup, they, they can very easily create their own markup as a base team. So I guess the, the other base teams are now kind of on the same level with the classy. So, um, which makes a lot of sense because that's the idea why Classy has been created, so it's easier to create the base teams. And the Classy is just the base team of, uh, of Drupal Core. So if you are creating your own team, I, I would myself use Classy or some other base team, but not maybe if I don't want to, want to create my own base team, so write all the markup by myself, then I wouldn't... Uh, extend the core. If you want to write all your markup by hand, if you're like more than DK, you can, you can use Classy. Uh, not, you cannot use Classy, you can just uh, use the core. So my question is, is the Classy responsive in any way? So the question was, is Classy responsive anyway? Um, that's a very good question that I actually didn't cover in, in my presentation. Uh, we don't, we try not to make teams responsive or use any other technology. Because in, in four years, when Drupal 8 obviously will be still used, uh, 
uh, responsive might not be the thing anymore. So the, the Bartik and uh, Seven are creating their responsiveness by themselves. There's, of course, some responsive uh, components that are coming from the core, like uh, responsive tables and things like that that are on the JavaScript. But uh, out of the box, they don't provide that much uh, responsive stuff. Uh, all, the, all the CSS that, are, that, that is in Classy is, of course, responsive. So if you, are, if you need the CSS from there, it's created so that it's not non-responsive. But it doesn't provide a lot of tools by itself. There is other tools in Drupal 8 core that, that can help you build responsive uh, stuff, like uh, responsive images and things like that. Hi, you told in the beginning that only those CSS files are loaded which are necessary or which are required on a site. And how does it work with the CSS caching when it's put together, those CSS files? Can you explain on that? So how it works is that um, if you aggregate the CSS, uh, we, we have to generate a new CSS aggregation for all the different setups of uh, CSS aggregations. So that's how it works. So, so in the files folder, you will have a lot of aggregated CSS files. Yeah. No? OK. Then I think we are good if no one wants to ask anything. So uh, come to the after party. Come to the sprints. You can ask me. I'm, I'm going to be available here. You can, you can bother me whenever you want. I like to be bothered. So that's why I'm here. Uh, thank you for coming. Have a nice day.